first gift. No, I'm right. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Shut your goddamn mouth. I'm trying to listen to Tom Likas. Bitch. And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show. News. Not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, oh, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 So I got a phone call from a woman I know who uh, has wanted to try to get into a relationship with me. It's not going to happen. I'm amazed she's still trying. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But she's been telling me about my need to settle down. I need to settle down. Does anyone need to settle down? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. 1-800-5800-866. Rudy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Rudy. What's up, man? I uh, I was listening, you know, this past few minutes, and I, I'm 29 and I feel like my life is over. You Why? Know, I, I I used to I used to follow the curriculum to the to the letter. You know, tell girls I don't want to get married, I don't want kids, and everything, and they were all over me. And uh, you know, eventually my my confidence just rose, and uh, of course my the, the the quality of chick I was getting went up. And I got one that I said, all right, this is the one, man. I, I don't want to mess this up. And sure enough, I let her move in. Dude, I was paying five fifty a month, my rent, right? One bedroom, all utilities paid. I could do whatever I want, man. I had all time, all the time in the world. I, and and now, now, now it's been like three years we've been together. And now our second child is two is is four months old. And and dude, it's so hard. I'm just coming back from the doctor. You know what I'm saying? It's it's never ending. There's there's. I, I mean, I try to take a little vacation to Vegas, and I figure, oh, man, maybe, you know, I, I, I'll have to pay it back when my taxes come in. I'll just enjoy myself, you know, with my buddies. It's his 30th birthday. We'll go have a good time. And luckily, I broke even in Vegas. But thinking about it, that was foolish. I didn't have the money to go to Vegas, and I, I don't have money for nothing anymore. You know what I mean? I used to have money for for parties, for partying, if you will. You know what I'm saying? I could go wherever, do whatever. And now... Now I'm stuck, man. I just and the next step is getting married, <laughs> and it's like, oh, dude, I should have listened. I should have just stayed on the curriculum, man. I know. <laughs> oh, it's so hard, bro. You're paying for it now. Oh my god, and, and I mean, I'm glad I can laugh at it. You know what I mean? Because hey, what, what else can I do at this point? But, but I, 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 I warned you. I told you. You, you know, you you had one. You voted out word for word what would happen. <laughs> you were exactly right. You weren't just kind of right, vague, and you know, a good description. You were right, all a hundred percent. I'm amazed. I've been married and divorced four times. I'm amazed how many people think they know better than I do. You know, I mean, it's it, what well, it's people have to experience things for themselves. I mean, luckily, my girl is, is good. I mean, I'm not miserable, you know what I mean? But it's so hard, man. It's really hard. I want people out there to hear what you're saying. you got to get to where you want to be in life before you start making a family and, and settling down. I mean, don't even – the whole <laughs> girlfriend thing, man. It starts, you start with a girlfriend, next thing you know. She's your baby's mama. Well, not only that, thinking you have to have a girlfriend or thinking that you have to settle down. This thinking right. is dangerous. <laughs> it is. Oh, man. And I look at it now, and there was all kinds of, I mean, at the time when I met this girl, there was all kinds of girls in my life, old, young, rich, you know, regular, whatever. And, you know, some of them were married, so I figured, oh, whatever, you know, I guess uh, maybe next lifetime, you know. And uh, just the other day, I saw one of these gorgeous 
executives with the convertible hardtop uh, Mercedes. And and, uh, and man, I knew in the day if she wasn't married, we could have we could have did something. And the other day, she goes, "Hey, I go, hey, how's it going?" And I call her by her married name. She goes, "Oh no, it's uh, such and such now." And I go, "Oh, you got married again?" She goes, "No, the other way around." <laughs> so now she's divorced, giving me that eye, and I'm like, "God damn it! What the hell was I thinking, man? Oh, I could have been set, dude. I at least could have milked her a little, or you know." What I'm right. <laughs> I mean, what? Yeah, you don't want to be married to the other person. I mean, that that wouldn't be any better. I don't want to be married at all. I just want to, you know. And I, I mean, my girl actually understands that, right? But, you know. But hey, eventually, and the pressure is going to mount, you know. And uh, I, I mean, I love her, but but you don't have to marry her. Yeah, exactly. I don't. Yeah, there's no benefit. There so, is zero benefit. So me. to forget about the pressure, who cares? You have to put your foot down and say, I'm not getting married, period. Yeah, it's, that's the way it's got to go, man. You have to do it that way. There's no... there's no. It's your way, way or it. the highway. And then, you know what, man, when I first met this girl, she was so cooperative. And and she, she was always cool and did whatever I want. And now if I do something, you know, that, that she doesn't approve of, it's a, it's a whole new woman. She, you know, I, I never saw this person inside of her before, you know. Because she was trying to reel you in. Exactly, exactly. And she now did. she's got you halfway there. Uh, she's already got three corners of the coffin nailed down <laughs> because you've got children and she's moved in. So all Dude, she yeah. needs to do now is get you to sign the paper and that box is sealed. Dude, I'm so lucky that, that I mean, that we have a place now. Like, I don't have to stay in that apartment anymore, but... Considering the fact of what real estate is now, I, I took over the mortgage on my parents' place, and that is the luckiest thing that ever happened to me. Or else I would be crammed in in God knows where with two kids and, a, and, and my old lady. You know what I mean? Miserable at that at that rate. But I mean, God, you got you got to get your life in order before you start making moves like this. It, it's you don't it's, even have to make moves like this. <laughs> you don't. You really don't. I mean, I. I mean, I'm happy, but I know I could. I could have a lot more fun if I was single, man. Then right. And, and the word is happier. I could be happier, you know. And and the word is happiest. <laughs> I could have been the happiest I could possibly be. But I mean, now I, if, if I ever try, if I ever want to get to that point, the level of effort that I got to put in is beyond exhausting. Compared I mean, to what it would have been had you not let some girl talk you into knocking her up. Oh, man, I remember. I remember. I was. I always used condoms too, and I remember being with her right, and, and she just kind of laying there, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell's going on? What am I not doing this right or whatever? Right. And of course, I took the condom off, and the whole situation changed. It was more, you know, she started responding more, and I was like, okay, I, you know, she just don't like condoms. Well, I wonder why. I That's wonder it. why she didn't like condoms. That's right. You know why. Oh, God, man. It, it's it's just, uh, dude, I swear to you, man, you were right. And I I'm, I thank you for, for still being there today, man, because there's got to be somewhere that guys can go to learn about life. Because this is what life is. Life is about your choices. And if you want to do... If you want to get to be somewhere of, of status in life, you got to make all the choices for yourself. Well, this girl I was talking to said, you just are trying to say it's all about money. It's not all about money. Yes, it is. Marriage is a contract. It's about paying somebody to be in love with you. The cost of love, too much I'd rather be liked by many for free than loved by one and to have to pay all their expenses. Can't make it any clearer. Thank you, Rudy. This is L on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom? L. How are you? Great. Great. Well, I just want to say that I don't really think it is all women because... You don't think it's uh, what? I, wait, 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 wait. You don't I, think it's what? <laughs> that not all women are the way you see it. I didn't say all women are the way I see it. You said that. 
No, 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 I'm just saying. I don't I, care I'm if all, I don't care. The fact that all women are like that doesn't negate what I said. No, 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 no I wasn't listening to the last part that you said because I had to. All right, well, I'll tell you what. When you listen, call back. Leah on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Okay, well, I wanted to call in and just kind of, um, I guess, defend you to a certain extent of these people saying, oh, Tom, you should settle down, or if you, you know, if you want it, who's going to be with you at the end? I think it's really unfortunate that in our culture, we kind of think that everybody has to get married and everybody has to have children, and there's something, you know, wrong with your life if you don't, because clearly there's something wrong with that pattern. If you look at our divorce rate and the number of children being raised by single-parent families or, you know, I just, it would be so much better if people didn't necessarily get married or have children, if that's not what was right for them or that's not what they wanted. I think you're right about that. And it just, it's so frustrating because I know I just uh, got married a couple years ago and people ask us frequently when we're going to start having children. And I, first of all, I think it's an out-of-line question. But second of all, um, I, would feel, I feel annoyed by it. I feel very irritated, the fact that the fact that we got married, the next thing we're supposed to do is have children. That's not what I want in our life right now. That's not what my husband wants in our life right now. We like our lifestyle right now. And, you know, it's just, it's just frustrating, and I, I feel kind of frustrated on your behalf when people are like, settle down, settle down. Why, is not, why aren't you settled down being successful in your career and having your nice home in the hills and having fun? I mean, that is settled down, and I feel like people are not getting that. Unless I'm handing over half of everything I own to a female, I'm not settled down? Exactly. And, you know, you can be you can be with someone. You don't even have to be married. You can have a serious, committed relationship without being married. You know, this idea that if you love someone, you must marry them, I think it's really, really flawed and really problematic. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with, you know, long-term monogamy if that's what you, if that's what you want. But it's so ingrained in our society. And, you know, you were saying that marriage is a contract. And really, there is so much uh, pressure on that contract because in a lot of ways, marriage does benefit society in very practical terms in the sense that, you know, if something goes wrong, ideally, there's one partner who can take care of the other one. So there's kind of one layer between someone becoming, you know, reliant on the state, for instance. Theoretically, that's at least how it's supposed to work. But, um the cost of that and the way how often it doesn't work is just not worth people getting married. The cost of love is too high. <laughs> I don't know if the cost of love is too high. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. You don't think that any of your the, the big loves in your life were worth it ultimately? No. Not worth the cost. Not worth the cost, not only in terms of dollars and cents, uh, the cost of my career, the time I lost in my career that I could never get back. And so you didn't get, you didn't feel that you were fulfilled with, from those relationships in other ways, though, that kind of compensated for that? I'm just saying, I think I would have been a lot happier uh, being liked by many than loved by one. Well, that's your right, and I wish people would, and I think that's that's you, and that's the thing, is people need to accept that not everybody, you know, that people can feel that way, and that there's nothing wrong with you for feeling that way, and that, you know, this isn't just something you need to get over or figure out. Exactly right. Okay, well, thank you, Tom. I'm so excited to have gotten through. I'm always trying to call and never getting through. Well, Leah, you finally pulled it off. Thank you for the call. <laughs> Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. He wanted to live with me, but, you know, the worst thing that he ever did was have me listen to you because the more I listen to you, the more I realize that he's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. These are our telephone numbers. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Is it necessary to settle down, huh? This is G. All these one-letter callers now. G. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hello, G. <laughs> well, I have the solution to all your marital woes. I've been thinking about this a lot. I don't have... Wait a minute. I don't have marital woes. Well, your non-marital woes. When you're... The I don't have woes. I am woe-free. You want to be married because you've done it four times. No, I don't yeah. want to be married. I'm done. Okay, well, in the event that someday in the future you're planning, I thought this long and hard. I thought it through. And by the way, I teach political science. I actually mention you 
um, when we get to the section on the media and we're talking about hate hate radio, <laughs> I mentioned you. <laughs> so, the rise of media, um, I teach political science, so you sit right in there. You like that? I thought. Oh, I love it. Yes. Yes, I do. Especially when I go to bed tonight making 70 times what you make for a living. I'm going to go to bed saying to myself, well, it's a good thing somebody's keeping me honest. <laughs> you know what, though? It's not about money. And for not That's what everybody money with money says. Money. It's not about money. Money doesn't motivate everybody. That's well, when, when some people know how to make it and some people teach political science. Well, I do just fine. I'm okay. I really am. It's not, sure it's you not do. Million, it's not a million dollars, but it's Sure wonderful. you do. Okay, so this is how to people. Well, anyway, do you want to hear my solution? I don't think you have a solution because I don't have a problem. Well, here's what I think. The reason that your relationships fail is that some of what you say is true. There's this rational calculation that people make when they're about to date, and so they factor in what they look like and, and how much education they have or lack of. Um, and then they sort of seek for somebody that matches what they deserve, what they, what they calculate is what they deserve. And you're looking for women that physically match you. And so you're running into women who are just low life because they just uh, want someone with money. So everyone I married was a low life. Well, they just want someone with money because mm. if they wanted somebody. Well, if they wanted somebody with money, why did they sign prenuptial agreements? Why am I not paying them alimony? Why didn't they trick me into pregnancies? Oh, see, wow, you're really say you say all women want no that i never ever said all i never no i never said that in fact very specifically recently on this program she said bucking art um very specifically on this program recently i said that i never ever diss my ex-wives and i never blame them for anything okay ever well. i said that if there was ever a fault, it was my own for picking wrong. I have said this, but you, without having all the information, jump right in and tell me you're going to solve my problems. I don't have any problems. The problem is not the people I married. The problem is getting married. No, it's not. There's lots yes, of people I'm married. it I have a is. You know what? Marriage, marriage is not for everybody, and I, I agree. Marriage with you. is not for men. But let me tell you this. Someday, and I know someone who, who was a wonderful guy, but he, like, did all this. He used to call it hit and run. He would just sleep with women and leave yeah. them. And then at 50 years, he was classic. He's a professor, too. This is my mentor professor. And he used to say, you know, hit and run, and that's it. And guess what? 58 years old, he had a stro diabetic stroke, and he was paralyzed. And I used to drive him back and forth to school. And this was a very sad guy. I mean, extremely sad because... He had no one. If he loved someone and they grew old with him, they would take care of him, even when he had a diabetic stroke. So that's what I'm thinking of for you, that you need someone for when you get old. Trust me, when you've got money, you've got all the best help in the world. Nah, it's not out of love. It's out of, you know. Trust me, and... many people who appear to be doing something out of love are trying to get into your will or they're trying to get something else from you. See, what you don't get is that there are a lot of people that aren't that way. Oh, there may be some people who are that way, but the vast majority of them are not people who marry you. People who marry you have an agenda, and that is to share in everything you got. I don't want anything my husband has. If if we, God forbid, left each other today, he could have everything that we've even gotten together. I well, you say that now until you find uh, until you well, find his face between the thighs of your best friend, and then we'll see if you say that. Oh, he would never do that. But even if he did, <laughs> he, he would never do that. He would never do. My husband, I, you know what? Sometimes I wish he would. Really? That, Why don't we hook that up? No, stop it. He wouldn't do it. He just, he loves our daughter and he loves our family too much to do that. It's not like I'm sure there are times he wishes he could, but he just wouldn't. People are around. Really? Is your best friend hot? <laughs> Probably not, no. But uh. anyway, it's beside the point. The point is that... Um, <laughs> You just have to make better choices. You're right. If you've said that, then you're absolutely right. You have to. No, it's not that I need to make better choices. I made a better choice. No, no. marriage. Okay, fine, fine, fine. And That's I mean, a better it's choice. Not, it's, it's not for everybody. These fine. are the happiest days of my life. These are the good old days. They are. You know what? I look back at my single days, and they were fun too. But These you know are what? the happiest days of my life. 
said, you know what? You don't have a baby. And once you have a baby, no, you know. no. Look at David Letterman. I don't have care ever, about David Letterman. And by have the way, you ever seen a guy so giddy? I again, I don't care about David Letterman. It doesn't matter. David Letterman is one person. Well, he's got that swell kid, and once you have a kid, it's all worth it. Well, that—that's that, assuming your your son isn't named Adolf Hitler or Osama bin Laden. <laughs> you don't know what you are playing roulette of a kind that it's a lot worse than going to Vegas, where you just lose no, a few bucks. No if you lose in the kid lottery, you are stuck. No, you will not lose. It's just so no, random. you will not lose. He will not be no. born with birth defects. He will not be born with his brain on the outside of his head. No, no. he won't be born no, retarded. He won't be born with special needs. Oh, well, that, yeah, his name right, won't be right. Special Ed. Oh, okay. No, no, that that is a different story. I, it's I roulette. You are betting on the red or the black. No, you, you just you, you have no amnios. idea what you're going to get. Amniocentesis. There's a protein test you take at two months. Again, if that were true, uh, there wouldn't be any children like that being born. No, people don't. People don't choose to abort them if they're retarded, and I don't think they should anyway. But the oh, point is, if there you really go. That well, that's my point. If you're really that against it, then suddenly you you're the parent of a retarded child, and <laughs> suddenly your whole life has turned into you being a caretaker. Look, I know people, and there are women that will not have a retarded baby. If you talk to them, they'll tell you, before I got married, I... Well, I will not I have know. a retarded baby either. I had an uncle who was retarded. I okay. know what I know what it's like to be around that. I know. I know. It's, it's now, weird. there are yeah, some I people know. who think it's just wonderful, and retarded people are just so cute, and it's so great. But you haven't lived until you're with somebody who's 15 years old, uh, who has a mentality of somebody who's 15 years old, like my uncle... Yeah, and to see him, and just to give you an example of what it's like to live around this, uh, to see him uh, just freely just uh, hop into bed and masturbate in oh. plain sight of everybody anytime he felt like it. Boy, that's rewarding. I'll tell you what. You know, in those movies about Forrest Gump and Rain Man, they never tell you that retarded people do stuff like that. Oh, I know. I, you know what? I su used to substitute teach, and some of the little Down syndrome girls would just start masturbating in class. And some of the there we go. Boys, that's great. The boys would grab your ass as you. Oh, well, that's that sounds very rewarding. Oh, it's horrible. No, but you know, what? I'm that's avoiding what? all of this. The issue is if you don't, if you don't avoid it, and you get a wonderful. Healthy, Who knows what you're going to get? You rolled the dice. You won the lottery. Somebody's going to win the big spin this Saturday night. It just probably won't be me. Well, you never know. You can have a delightful child. And let me tell you, any bit, the most Ugh. horrible woman, the most horrible woman in the world is worth living with for a child. Whatever it is, you have to teach it to wipe its ass. And you know what? I have no interest. Well, Tom, it was nice talking to you. I'm sure it was. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Dallas, Texas. Love you. Thank you. Hey, I, uh, I'm going to have to keep this short. Um, the lady that was just on the phone to talk to you long, and I'm going to have to jump off. But I just wanted to say uh, I didn't start listening to you until after I got married, unfortunately. I do love my wife, but... We thought we had it pretty much figured out. She wanted to have kids. I agreed with it, so we went along with the whole process. And now, listen to what you just said. She wanted to have kids, and I agreed with it. Sure. So, uh, long story short, I sat in the cup, and I was fine, but we went into the doctor, and the doctor said she had a less than one percent chance of conceiving naturally. So, short of spending thirty grand on in vitro, we were like, thought about it, and said, hey, you know what? This is a good thing. This is, you know, this is going to be we're going to be able to do a lot of more things and. You know, we both have siblings, you know, with kids. It's a, this isn't a big deal. It's going to be awesome. Well, we're traveling. Everything's going great. You know, we're getting our careers off the ground. And then uh, she becomes pregnant. So long story short, um, you know, he's two. He's fantastic. He's the love of our lives. But sometimes we just look at each other and we're just like, what are the chances, man? Because, I mean, there's so much stuff that we still want to do. And, I mean, it's going to take a long time until we get around to doing it. So, I mean... It's kind of pluses and it's negatives, but, I mean, like I said, we both love our son, but, man, there's times that we just, uh, you know, we're like, hey, you know, it could have turned out a little bit differently, so. So? Oh, so, I'm just saying, I mean, that's just how how, how, how the cookie crumbles. I mean, uh, we thought we had it figured out that we weren't going to have kids and everything was going in that general direction of, 
you know, living life and being young and, uh, you know. Now suddenly you have to be, you, now suddenly you have to be boring and responsible all the time. Exactly. There's no more, uh, can't stay up till stay in and sleep until noon. You're up at, uh. Oh, yeah, you can. I just did it. <laughs> well, I'm, I know you can, Tom, but unfortunately for some of us, uh, those days are going to be. It was crazy. that one last thrust. That's why I feel like crap today. I uh, know. I guess that's what it is. I guess that's what it is. I guess uh, less than one percent uh, still chance. So we have. Thank God I've got. That. Thank God I got blackout shades. <laughs> All right, Tom. Well, like I said, I got to keep it short since that chick was talking so long. But uh, next time we're down in Dallas, everybody down here loves you. I love that, Mark. Thanks very much for the call. Tom Luckis. 1-800-5800-TOM. What was that again? Were you not listening to me, sir? I couldn't hear a word you were saying. Well, I couldn't hear a word that you were saying either. I see. That's great. I like the level of discourse here. It's fantastic. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Rusty on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. First of all, thanks so much for taking my call today. I'm doing it as a public service. Well, I know you are, sir. Mm-hmm. Second of all, I uh, I owe you an apology, Tom. Why is that? Well, Tom, let me tell you. So I moved out here from back east about two and a half years ago. Out here? Um, Moved out here to Santa Barbara. Was with this girl for about two and a half years. By the way, it took less than 20 seconds to say he moved out here from back east. He was not specific. Which means he probably wasn't coming from New York. It's probably somewhere like New Jersey or Connecticut or somewhere that isn't New York. But he had to get it in in the uh, first 20 South, seconds of the call. South Carolina. South but, um, Carolina? <laughs> yes, sir. I knew it wasn't New York. No, not New York. Um, was I didn't know people in South Carolina also call it out here. That's right. Well, Tom, um, so I recently got dumped. Thought my girl was different than all the girls you talked about on your show. Yeah, well. <laughs> like I said, I owe you an apology. You certainly do. Well, I sense I've stocked my fridge full of beer and uh plan on jumping right back on as many horses as I can. Well, Rusty, I, I hope you'll uh, learn from your experience and not make the same mistakes again. Uh, yes, sir, you know it. All right. Well, Tom, thanks very much, and have a good day, sir. Thank you, Rusty. Enjoy your time out here. Before you go back there. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. This is Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Hey. It's going okay. And I do care, my man. You are... Man, I, I'm sorry, I called, uh, I don't know, an hour ago, which is great, because everyone loves to eat in a restaurant that everyone's going to. Um, but i got to get to class here in about ten minutes. I'm at UNLV. Um, we had a uh, a girl, Leah, I think her name was, that called. And the key thing that she called about was, uh, you know, oh, well, wasn't your love worth it, even though, you know, it's all over now. No, it wasn't. And you're the type of girl that breaks up with the guy and says that after because, oh, well, it was worth it, wasn't it? No, because when we walked in on you riding our best friend, I'm sorry, that wasn't the good part of my relationship. <laughs> oh, boy. Dude, I, I i mean, I'm in my third year of college now, and I'll tell you what, I follow the 101, and it's all, I wish I would have heard it before. Man, I had, I had the girlfriend in high school, two and a half years, prom night prom night i got to go out at the after party and see her on top of a guy in his truck love that oh yeah that you know that that was actually the best self-esteem builder i ever had of course what do i tell people about the prom oh i don't know i've missed that i tell men do not go to the prom oh well of course i mean we know that now we know not to take them out not to spend more than forty dollars i'll tell you what that whole night cost me over six hundred dollars. Was it worth it? Oh well, for the story that I get to tell on the air today, absolutely. <laughs> that and that alone. And that, yeah, that's about it. I, uh, I am most notably known in college for the best problem story, 
and a whole lot more. But, I mean, people still remember that. People still remember the girl's name. Oh, by the way, we're in Vegas. Guess what profession she chose. <laughs> <laughs> she riding the pole? She is absolutely, no joke, a stripper down at Little Darlings. There we go. No, that's, I, that's just where they grow up, man. I, I guess so. Jason, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Dennis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi, Dennis. Hey, um, first of all, a uh, very long-time listener, over 10 years. Wow. I started listening to you back in L.A. in 97.1, but I'm here now in Las Vegas, same as the other caller. And... Uh, yeah, second of all, I want to thank you because I DTB. Very nice. Today. How, I, how'd that go? How did she react? Uh, well, you know, she gave me the sob story that, uh, you know, she she doesn't think she could make it. And she doesn't think she could live without me and all that. So, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I broke some rules. You know, I had a girlfriend... But uh, after uh, weighing things, the pros and cons of a relationship, I, I told myself there's really nothing for me, you know, to get into a relation, serious relationship like that. And, uh, well, uh, I called in because I wanted to uh, point out that, uh, you know, most of these women think uh, settling in and, uh, you know, having a family, having children and all that is... Uh, is a wonderful thing that you're doing, uh, you know, something for the society, and it's a, it's a good thing to do. Just remember this. They don't call it settling for nothing. Well, you know, well, most women, they think, uh, well, actually, they, some of them tell you that because you don't have a family, you don't have uh, babies, that they think you're selfish. Well, actually, I think... Um, they don't realize that they're the selfish ones. They're they're having babies for selfish reason, reasons, you know? In many cases, that's true, Dennis. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Tyler, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Okay, Tyler. Okay, well, I was, uh, I've was i been listening, you know, for, uh, for the last hour or so, and I'm just trying to think of, Think of what would uh, what would move women to say the things that they do and act the way that they do, and I've come up with a theory in my head, and that theory is the fact that when they were little girls, they were told fairy tales about princes and kings and everything like that, and how how that that's exactly what they were shooting for. They were they were shooting to find Prince Charming, and and they needed to find him as soon as they possibly could, and I think it's a bunch of BS. Because they've been fed a bag of lies their entire life. And I have, too. I think what they should have done is they should have told fairy tales for how it actually is. About the uh, the king who slays dragons every day and then goes home and beds the most supple virgin in all the land. And then, at the end of the night, sends her back to her village. Sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. I guess the only true thing that, that goes along with fairy tales is the fact that once they become the queen or the princess... Is that they end up poisoning the king or they end up stabbing him in the back so they can inherit his wealth. Everything that he has earned. That's it. That's really the only true part about it. So I think I'm gonna make an honest effort to become a fairy tale writer and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna title it Fairy Tales for how you should actually raise your kids. And I think we can probably get rid of a lot of myths and women will know exactly what the score is. They'll know that they have to be a very good-looking, supple virgin in order to be even in the, the graces of the king for a very short period of time. Sounds good to me, Tyler. Thank you for the call. Gene on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mr. Likas, how yes, you doing? doing great. Mr. Likas, we miss you here in Seattle, man. I got a story for you, man. That just happened maybe over the last four hours. This chick that I was dating uh, about a year ago, uh, me and her, we did our thing and all that great stuff. And uh, she didn't get what she wanted, a ring, a marriage, and someone to take care of her. Access denied. She get married. She called me up about maybe a week ago. I didn't, 
I didn't, I didn't, uh, listen to the, uh, I didn't call her back when she called me. And today, this morning, she called me again. Tom, she came over here, shot down toward me, drank some vodka. <laughs> and Tom, I nailed her. <laughs> if you could have heard the things that she was saying. <laughs> really? Hear? Yeah, rip tone. I, I kid you not. Do you miss this? Do you miss that? I'm like, yeah, okay, right. Tom, <laughs> we played darts for about an hour. And she drank half a bottle of vodka. <laughs> I love that. I nailed her. And she said, thank you. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> How hey, great Tom, is that? Tom, I'm still the same dog that I was before you left Seattle, man. <laughs> thank Things you. Things ain't changed. You are the man. Gene, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Sharon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Great. Tom, I listen to you a lot when I'm stuck in traffic. Keep it up. <laughs> I will. Don't worry, because the traffic is sure going to keep up. But I have a question for you. Hmm. I was wondering if you were to find a woman, let's say, that was very, very attractive, but she was also extremely intelligent, would you be willing to, quote, unquote, settle down with her? Why would I need to settle down with anyone? Because perhaps it, it is interesting to be with someone who's both attractive and intelligent. I'm wondering if a woman is intelligent as well as attractive, does that turn you on? Not particularly, uh, but the thing is, if you are not married and you don't settle down with anyone... Uh, when you feel like being with somebody like that for an evening, you can be. And uh, the vast majority of the time, when you just want to get laid, you can be with that kind of woman. Okay, but I'm asking you personally. I'm you answering find personally. intelligence a turn-on? No, I don't find it a turn-on, no. And why is that? Because I'm like any other man. I'm visual. So you don't need a woman to communicate with? You don't, you don't want someone who can sort of challenge you intellectually? I'm, no, I'm not looking for my sex partner to challenge me intellectually. <laughs> I like being challenged intellectually by friends, at parties, at uh, trade conventions of the broadcasting business. Love it at those times, and that's mm -hmm. where it belongs. I love getting into it with callers on the radio, but I don't want to get into it with the person I have to then have sex with. But that person that you have sex with then has to spend the evening with you in bed. And you often They don't have to. I, 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 I will towel off and get the hell out of there. I, they don't have to be there. Okay. Do you ever take women out? Do you ever... I try to avoid that. In public? I try to avoid that unless they're paying. Okay. <laughs> so pretty much you find intelligent women a turn off. Would you be willing to say that? No, it's not that they're a turn off. It's just simply that the minute they start opening their yap about something, other than opening their yap for the most obvious and, and, and necessary reason, uh -huh. uh, then it, I start losing interest in sex with them. Well, that's a shame because I think that they can be both. Well, I know you think that, but you don't date women, so I don't think you really know. I suppose that that is a fair assessment. However, I believe that you were burned by someone. and as a result, Every man you know, listening to this show was burned by someone. There's nothing unique about it. So you admit that. You think that the reason that you are the way you are is you were burned by someone. No, that you no. Really cared every about. man is the way he is because every man has had someone stick the knife in and twist it. <laughs> so you think that they express this sort of behavior because they feel really bitter towards women not bitter it's just that they become realistic and what well, is realistic I think realistic is jaded when it's coming from you well being jaded i think is a realistic point of view especially if you're a guy the tom like show